Tooth and Claw by Ken Wells. Chapter 1. Howls surrounded her. They echoed in the valley, hiding their origin. She knew that they were closing in. She knew that they were hungry. She knew that her legs could not carry her any faster. The snapping twigs made her wince again and again. Paranoia set in. With each crunch, she wondered who caused it. Was it the sound of her pursuer? She knew that she could not hide. Her breathing was too loud. Evasion would be impossible. She was far too slow. She ran because she didn't know what else to do. The familiar sound of rushing water gave her hope. Maybe, just maybe, she could get into the river. Going downstream would be risky, but it could not have been worse than getting eaten. The river roared with churning white rapids. While peering over the edge, the realization hit that the river was far enough away that the fall alone could kill her. Even if she survived, the river would finish her. She was wrong about the river. It was just as bad as the ravenous creatures. A low-pitched growl rumbled its way through the thick foliage. She was cornered. Her body stopped listening to orders. Her feet were stuck to the ground. Yellow eyes glowed through the leaves, stretching through the bushes. A large hand covered in black fur pushed a branch to the side. Its hands looked almost human despite the long, sharp claws at the end of each finger. Large, dagger-like teeth were on full display while it snarled at its victim. It wasn't quite human, but it wasn't quite a wolf. Mortified, she knew that she would either plunge into the torrent or be eaten alive just like her parents. She had no protection. It was over. A sneer stretched across the creature's face. Its steps were slow, its movements methodical. Its slow movements seemed to mock Christie's plight. Christie's heart raced as her hunter crouched. Being eaten was no longer a possibility. It was a reality. Trembling with fear, she tripped backwards, air. The ground vanished from beneath her feet. The edge of the cliff seemed to rise higher and higher. The whooshing sound of wind muffled all other noises as her limp body plummeted below. The shady creature's claws had not been able to catch her before she fell out of reach. The beast snarled and howled. It, it hung its head as it stepped back away from the cliff. Cold. Her head bobbed up and down, plunging again and again into the glacial waters. She could feel nothing but the water's grasp as it engulfed her. Chest constricting, it no longer allowed air to flow. Rock after rock, she tumbled her way through the rapids, endless groping. Her hands kept slipping from the rocks, making escape seem impossible. Suffocating, her desperation was giving way toward despair. Slam. A rock had caught her. For a brief moment, the raging waters pinned her in place. It was just enough. Long enough for her to see ahead, long enough to see the waterfall. With every ounce of strength, she stretched and clawed in a futile attempt to climb the rock. The thin film of algae proved too much for her grip. Her strength was spent. She had lost the fight. The current whisked her away, hurling her towards certain doom. Crash. Look for a bat. Look for a scratch. We cannot let her stay if they've gotten her, a man's voice said above her. Christy listened to the figure leaning over her. She couldn't quite make out who they were or where she was. The faint sound of birds chirping was barely audible through the crashing sound of water. It must be a new day. The cold. She was still cold from the river. She's clean. We gotta get her warm, a woman said. No, we either inspect her or put her back where we found her, the man said. Look at her. Are you really that heartless? Are you really going to tell me that you're willing to let her get eaten by biters? I'm just say, shut it. I'm saving her. If you've got issues with that, take it up with Pops. Christie's focus began to return. The first thing she saw was a young black woman holding a tattered towel while glaring at a man standing over her. Christie's teeth chattered as she reached out for the towel. Shivering uncontrollably, she asked, Wh Where am I? What's your name? asked the man. Christy, she said, as though she'd been caught trespassing. Christy, you're safe, said the woman with a warm smile. The name's Camry. That funny-looking guy over there is Joseph. Joseph awkwardly gave a crooked smile to Christy. He looked like a geek with his skinny yet flappy body. Before her parents died, they had told her to look for guys like him. They said that guys like him would know how to keep things running. Life during this past year told her differently. Looking around, Christy realized they'd brought her into an elaborate cave. She laid near the entrance, beyond which was a sheet of falling water. Everywhere she looked, there were pipes and machinery. The cave was better equipped than any of the places that she had slept in the past year. Where am I? We call it the crypt, said Joseph. It's our tomb. What's wrong with you? 
Camry snapped at Joseph before she turned back to Christy with another pleasant smile. We're in a hideout behind a waterfall. We've been able to stay safe here for a while now. She pointed to the narrow opening of the cave. That's the only way out of this place, and that, she said pointing behind them, is just a precaution in case those monsters manage to get this far. Looking around, Christy didn't gain any comfort from her surroundings. The walls were cold, small puddles of water were strewn around, broken stalagmites and stalactites littered the room, which was no bigger than her bedroom had been. Where Camry had pointed, there was a rickety wall made of driftwood. She wondered if this really offered any protection at all. She turned to examine Camry. Her short, curly hair reminded her of her fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Williams. Only Camry was a lot younger. She must have been younger than her mom. She looked the same age as her cousin, who had just graduated from college. She dressed like she was from the suburbs, too. Her clothes, though obviously worn with use, looked too expensive for someone who lived in a mountain town. She seemed out of place, just like Christy. Christy sank down as she sat staring at the cave's entrance, listening to the sounds rumbling in through the narrow opening. Shivers ran down her spine, but no longer from the cold. Tears rolled down her cheeks while visions of the werewolves danced through her thoughts. She pulled the towel tight around her. Wherever she went, they followed. If her parents couldn't escape their hunger, how could she?